Hi, this is Ron White from 3DP. I'm here today to show you uh, one of our uh, remote power stations. I wanted to give you some kind of idea of uh, some of the features and benefits of the remote power station. You know, we make them in lots of different sizes. This is our smallest version. And they'll go anywhere from this small version up to a full tandem axle trailer that might possibly have even a methane fuel cell as well as a hybrid solar system on it. So lots of different sizes, different mast heights, different options. I was kind of walking around those today, show you how that looks, and also show you how to deploy one of these as we're talking about the features and benefits. So to get you started on some of these features and benefits, the first thing I wanted to show was the, galv uh, the galvanized trailer. You notice that that trailer is fully hot dip galvanized. What that means is that the, uh, the, the trailer itself is manufactured and then dipped in a vat of galv. It does for us, it, uh, it coats the inside and the outside of the tubes, so it keeps them from rusting, makes them last a long time, even on a tailings dam or some spot that you're doing some acid leaching on. The hot dip gal will keep the thing from rusting and give you some good long life out of that trailer. So after that, I wanted to talk just a little bit about this mast. This, a lot of the features on this trailer, you know, they're designed specifically for the environment we're putting them in and the use case. So this particular mast is our 20-foot three-section mast. We've got a couple different options on it as well. There's a 30-foot mast and there's a 20-foot two-section mast. But typically, they're designed very similar to this with dual winch system. And I'll show you how the winches work in a minute. But basically, one winch will raise the mast to vertical and the second winch will use to raise it all the way up to its full height. It makes it a whole lot easier for, first of all, trailering it, making sure you're not hitting things while you're driving down the road when it's laid horizontal like this but also for just deploying your radios and your other things, uh, cameras and other things that you might put on the mast. A lot easier to get to, you don't need a bucket truck to get up and do the work on the, on the trailer. You can also kind of get an idea, which I'll show it again in a minute, but the trailer's got this uh, set screw here and this ring on it here, on the mast. What that allows me to do is I loosen the set screw and I can rotate this mast 360 degrees. So once the mast is up, we can rotate it to align any directional antennas that you might have, make your deployment really easy. So first, let me show you how these outriggers work. Um, very typical, but we can, you pull this pin and then start to pull out your outrigger. And then just keep pulling it out until it hits this next detent like that. That's locked in place. Now we need to rotate this jack. So we pull the pin on the jack, rotate that around and replace the pin. And then we can go ahead and raise the jack. And then back at the back, these outriggers are similar. On this particular small trailer, we brought the outriggers out at a 45 degree angle to give us a bigger footprint. On some of the larger trailers, that's not necessary, but this very, very lightweight and small trailer, it needed to come out a little larger footprint. But the same kind of operation. So just finishing up the uh, outriggers here. But back to the galve, you know, one of the big benefits of that galve is the, the life that you're gonna get out of your trailer. A lot of times, we've got these trailers that have been running for 10 years at different mines, and they're still out there and running good without uh, showing rust and wear. A lot of times we have to replace the, the jacks because the foot of the jack will rust sitting down in the mud or the, or the leach or whatever it is in. But the trailer itself is going to hold up great. Uh, as compared to competitors' trailers that are painted, they just don't hold up over the long time at the mine and in those environments. So I've got the outriggers out now. This trailer is pretty much ready for me to deploy the mast at this point. Um, and then we'll, then we'll deploy the panels finally. So at this point, on the mast here, you'll see I've got a, for trailering, I've got a safety pin here that holds the mast down. So I need to pull that pin, and then we'll be able to raise the mast. I should have mentioned that this, uh, this antenna mount that we've got here is what we call our gold post mount. It's one option, and it works really nicely because I can put the radio in the middle and different, four different antennas or multiple different antennas on this with a little bit of spatial diversity on those antennas. There are other options though if your radio, depending on what type of radio you use, some of our customers are using just this center pipe and maybe a longer piece of that pipe to get a little extra mast height instead of the goalpost solution. So it really depends on what your radios you're using, what antennas you're using, and what your actual requirement might be. But this works really well for a lot of radio solutions. All right, so we're ready to raise the mast at this point. I've got uh, the first winch here that'll raise this uh, from the horizontal to the vertical. We'll go ahead and crank that up. And once the mast's all the way up, I'll put this locking bar down in this to keep it there. So to raise the mast vertically, first thing I have to do is pull this pin here, which releases the top part of the mast. So it can raise 
straight up vertically. And then once it's out, once it's out of the detent, you can just go ahead and crank the mast up. So, as you notice when the mast was going up, probably a little bit of shake, but when you get to the very top, each one of those mast sections has a lock that it'll lock into. So it, it locks the mast very rigid when it's fully extended. Also, this uh, safety pin that we had on the left that you had to start with also has another indent at the top. So it drops in, locks the mast at full extension, and each one of those uh, locking mechanisms inside the pipes hold the mast pretty rigid. So you don't get a lot of vibration and wobble on the mast. So I told you that we can rotate this mast 360 degrees. I want to show you how that's done. Once the mast is up in the vertical position, all you have to do is loosen this set screw on the front of the mast, which loosens it inside this ring. And then from there, you can rotate the mast to whatever direction you need to. Really helps you in aligning your directional antennas instead of having to constantly come up and down and realign the antenna. And then once you've got the mast where you want it, you just tighten this set screw back up. And with that tight, your mast is now rigid. It won't move. So you've aligned your antenna and you're deployed. The last thing we have to do is we have to change the alignment on those solar panels. We want them facing towards the sun. So we need to align them. One feature that we should talk about real quick is actually where the solar panels are on this trailer. A lot of times you'll see a trailer that has the solar panels either on the mast or up here near the mast. That is a really bad design flaw. The problem is any shadow across the solar panel will reduce its effectiveness. It, it can be as much as 80% by something as small as, as a branch of a tree or something very small across one panel. So we want to keep those panels out of the shade as much as possible. The shade from the, from the mast can cause that uh, reduction in performance. So by, with this design, we've put the panels at the back of the trailer, the mast at the front of the trailer. Then you face the panels towards the sun or face the trailer towards the sun so that all day long, the panels are in front of the mast and the shadows fall in the other direction. Now at this point in this, this uh, deployment, I haven't really done that very well, but I would, move, I would have rotated the trailer so that I was facing properly into the south. When that's done, I would go ahead and move these panels to face towards the south. So let me go ahead and do that on these two. So to, to rotate the panels, we get, we've got both rotate and tilt capability on these solar panels. And it's again done with these little set screws. So the first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the tilt angle on this panel. And we'll just do a, uh, a temporary set on the tilt. We might adjust it further after we get them angled at the right angle. But this tilt would be something like this. I just rotate the panel to where I think is gonna be giving me good uh, 90 degrees to the sun. And tighten those set screws back up. And those will hold that panel at that rotation. So we've got the, this panel tilted. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it now. We rotate it by loosening these two set screws here. And once they're loose, then we can go ahead and rotate the panel around again to face south. We want it facing south so that the shadow from the mast doesn't ever fall on our panel. So I'm going to rotate, well, south in this hemisphere, I guess. So rotate that around and then tighten these two set screws back up and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Let's go ahead and rotate that panel around now the other direction. All right. So with this trailer fully employed, she's good to go. Um, when you come back to move it later, it's pretty easy to, to uh, do the reverse. Change your panels around, lower your mast, well actually rotate your mast back to the right direction so it's straight up and down. Then lower the mast and uh, then bring your outriggers in. So let's just run over those options one more time. The first one was the mast. We do have three different masts that we can use. This is our smallest mast because it's on the smallest trailer. It's 20 foot tall, three section mast. We do have a 20 foot tall, two section mast as well that is used a lot of times. All of them have the full rotation capability. We also have a 30 foot tall mast that we can use when needed. The 30 foot tall mast doesn't really work on this trailer. The trailers doesn't have a big enough footprint to hold it up. But we do have a 30 foot tall mast for some of our other trailers. Another option, of course, is different uh, panels and battery capability. The larger trailers can put more of the battery boxes on the trailer, so either two or even three battery boxes on the trailer, so you can hold a whole lot of battery on there for long periods of autonomy. You can also put more panels on the trailers. We can go up to four of these 300 watt panels on a trailer, so we can put a whole lot more solar panel on the back of that trailer. 
Another option is a larger distribution box. So in here is our electronic distribution. We've got the uh, charge controller and the circuit breakers and the rest of the thing for distribution. Also PoE injectors, etc. go inside here. So sometimes a larger box is nice because we want to put more PoEs, we want to have switches, manage switches, other things like that inside this box. And then finally, just the three different sizes of trailers. The smallest size, the larger trailer can hold two battery boxes and it can go with a 30 foot tall mass because it's got a larger footprint. And then the, the tandem axle trailer, which can hold three battery boxes, up to 12 of the 200 amp hour batteries. That larger trailer can also be deployed with the hybrid um, methane fuel cell and solar solution. So with the hybrid methane fuel cell, we've got methane for extreme north country where you may have a period of time with no sun at all. We can have the methane to take care of that period of time. And then the solar takes care of the rest of the year up in those far, far north environments. So there's the 3DP remote power station.